They are found in your food, packaging, your cookware, your furniture and clothes, poisonous forever chemicals that seep into our water supply from pollution. We found more than a dozen Colorado water systems have what some states call unsafe levels of the toxic chemicals. CBS4 investigator Katie Weiss with more now on what this could mean for your health and what's being done about it. I felt betrayed. I felt frustration, irritation. Chris Graham says he's been poisoned by the public water supply at his home in Colorado Springs. I have thyroid issues. Uh, we have stomach issues. Um, possibility of cancers uh, is really going to be an impact. The veteran says his thyroid problems have caused him to gain nearly 200 pounds. His health issues so bad he had to quit working. He believes high levels of PFAS or perfluoral substances in his water are to blame. It does weigh on you. It weighs on your mind. I mean, uh, how would it not? PFAS are chemicals that can cause birth defects, cancer, and thyroid disease, among other health problems. They're called forever chemicals because once they're in your body, they don't leave. While the EPA has no legal limit, it recommends PFAS in drinking water not be any higher than 70 parts per trillion for two PFAS chemicals. But eight states say that's not good enough, setting more stringent legal limits, like Massachusetts, which has a PFAS max of only 20 parts per trillion for six PFAS chemicals. In Colorado, the state health department just tested 400 water districts for the very first time, touting it found no water systems had levels above the EPA's guidelines. It was an encouraging first step. But we dug through the findings, learning 13 water systems have levels above the safe limit of 20 parts per trillion Massachusetts recently set. Eight of those water systems in the Denver metro area like Arapahoe County with a level of 23 parts per trillion and Forest Hills Riva Chase water in the foothills with a level of 26.4. And the highest we found was in Frisco water at 58.5 parts per trillion. I questioned the head of the testing project about those findings. What would you say then to those folks in those water districts where there were some of those higher results? Um, should those folks be concerned? At this point, we don't believe that they should be concerned. If people um, are still concerned, they can look at options for themselves. They can look at bottled water, for example, or reverse osmosis systems for their own home. PFAS is not a new issue for many people in Colorado Springs. Graham and more than 100 others are suing several chemical companies, claiming their water was contaminated by PFAS and firefighting foam used nearby. His lawyer, David McDivitt, says the lawsuit is part of a nationwide class action suit against the harmful chemicals. This is one of the most significant environmental litigations that has taken place in the last several decades. It's significant because thousands of people around the country have been impacted by chemicals that have seeped into their water supply system from foam that was used by the U.S. military to help put out fires. McDivitt believes Colorado should pass laws forcing water companies to clean up their drinking water. I think it's very prudent for states to take a hard look at what's an appropriate level. I think the lower the better because no exposure is, is healthy. We reached out to those water districts with some of those higher results. So far, we've only heard back from Frisco Water, which tells us the town of Frisco will be partnering with the EPA and the state health department to further evaluate PFAS levels and increase frequency of testing if they see change over time. Now, if you'd like to see the level of PFAS found in your water, just find this story on our website right now, cbsdenver.com. I'm Katie Weiss, covering Colorado First.